Welcome back to the show, everybody. It's that magical time of the year again, where we open presents, get disappointed by the casual racism of our family members, but most importantly, where we watch Christmas horror movies, and that's exactly what we're doing today. It's the only thing that keeps me sane, and I use the word sane very lightly. Last year, we talked about the infamous Silent Night, Deadly Night, as well as its remake. Ho, ho, ho. Fun times. But this year is all about the sequel, released in 1987, featuring a big buff dude shooting people and laughing about it. <laughs> Get ready for generous eyebrow movements, old women in wheelchairs, a car blowing up for seemingly no reason whatsoever, and an unhealthy amount of flashbacks. Because today we're finally watching... Silent Night. Deadly Night, Part 2. In order to talk about Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part 2, we must go back to 1984 and revisit the first movie's troubled history. Silent Night 1 had a good but very short life, as it was pulled from theaters barely a week after its release. The public was outraged to see ads on the television about an evil, murderous Santa Claus movie. <gasps> and feared it would corrupt the brains of their stupid snot-nosed little children. Therefore, it was axed away from existence. Bye bye. This brings us to 1987, where some producers who were apparently brain dead or on some very good crack approached a TV movie editor with very little experience, Lee Harry, and they asked him to recut the original Silent Night Deadly Night movie and change it into something slightly different so that they could re release it and maybe make a few bucks. Are you fucking stupid? What can you guys do with this? Can you mess it around, change a few things, put new music on it? No. Lee needed the cash, and so he accepted this job, but he had this audacious request to shoot maybe a couple of new scenes in order for this to be an actual sequel. Crazy, right? Shooting scenes for a movie. And so they made a deal. Use a lot of footage from the original through flashbacks, and quickly shoot some new stuff with zero budget. So some new stuff they shot in barely a week after writing the script in two days. Two days. It, and it shows. <laughs> the final result is an experience, to say the least. The actual story of Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2 focuses on Ricky, Billy's younger brother from the first film. He's in what seems to be an asylum, and this guy Dr. Bloom is asking him questions about his childhood trauma. Going too fast for you, Doc. So Ricky explains everything that happened via flashbacks of the original movie. Billy saw his parents get killed by a guy dressed as Santa, grew up in an orphanage where this bitch mother superior smacked the shit out of his little ass, and taught him that punishment is good. Punishment is good. Yeah. Ooh. Then Billy grew up to be this handsome hunk who doesn't seem to be very stable mentally. Punishment is good. And he started killing people to punish them for being naughty. Oh. But at the end, right as he's about to get revenge on the spanking goddess Mother Superior, he's shot to death. What you say? So that's essentially what Ricky explains to Dr. Bloom for 40 minutes. Nearly 50% of this movie is not from this movie. It is just playing the first film and making people pay for it. How fucking funny is that? Naturally, the movie was heavily criticized for not being a real movie, just half of one. And then you start to read the reviews, which were brutal, calling out all the usage of the first movie's footage. But I gotta say, the new footage they filmed most definitely makes it all worth it. Bingo! The second part of this movie finally focuses on Ricky's story, who grew up to look like this 25-year-old teenager. Just like Billy, he's traumatized by Mother Superior and her punishment methods, and therefore, whenever he sees someone being naughty, naughty. he murders the shit out of them. Gotta love that little- uh. Then Ricky's teenage years are over. He's now an adult, who looks the same age, if not younger, than his teenage self. Okay. Once again, and for the next half hour, Ricky comes across random people and just murders them in various fun ways. But only at the end does he dress up as Santa, gets revenge on Mother Superior, and also gets shot. What you say? What you, what you say? Plot twist though, he's alive. Oh, it's great. It's about this guy who dresses up like Santa Claus and kills people. What? I'm holding you up, asshole. 
though everything was kind of fucked from the start with the insane amount of reused footage. But the fuckery doesn't stop there. <laughs> The amount of blatant errors, stupid inconsistencies, illogical plot points, and production problems here are astronomical, to say the least. I don't know what made him stop. You don't? Actually, I do know what made him stop. Oh, okay. Firstly, I mean, the premise of this whole movie is centered around Ricky, who, just like Billy, was traumatized by the death of his parents. Only thing is, in the first one, when this happens, Ricky is a newborn child. Hey, listen, I'm no scientist, but I don't think people remember much from when they were zero years old. Don't worry, though, the film has a good explanation for this. How could you possibly remember all that? I was there. Oh, okay. Then the overall conflict, Ricky wants revenge on Mother Superior, except now she looks like a Resident Evil boss. <gasps> what the fuck is wrong with your face? Well, they could not get the original actor back for the role, so without ever addressing it, they just melted her face so that we don't realize it's someone different. Except it's clearly someone different. As mentioned before, we have a teenage and an adult Ricky, but the actor playing teenage Ricky is, in real life, three years older than adult Ricky. <sighs> I think I was in my mid-twenties, and I was playing like a 14, 15 year old. You can't make this shit up. Of course, the production was kind of a disaster. There were scenes where they didn't have permits to shoot, and so they were actively avoiding the cops while filming. In this scene, this blonde motherfucker gets killed while wearing sunglasses, but they forgot to put them on during the whole conversation. So he just quickly grabs them before his death, for no reason. There was this error with a stunt, where the car nearly annihilated the stuntman. That was pretty close. We're talking inches away from death here. Oh my god, we almost killed this guy. Then at the end, Mother Superior gets decapitated, but her headless corpse is drier than her vagina. It's not that they didn't want any blood, they had it. It's that they were filming at some old couple's house and were not allowed to stain the carpet. You see, this is what happens when you have a week to shoot a movie. It's as disastrous as this lady's fucked up face. Well, it looks like it's garbage day for this film, as nothing seems to work here. It's barely a real movie, with half its runtime being reused footage, it's got glaring continuity issues, production mistakes, and stupidity beyond measure. I was there. And yet here it is, 35 years later, proudly holding the status of a cult classic. And there's a very good reason for that. This movie would be nothing, a forgotten, meaningless void, had it not been for its secret ingredient, Eric Freeman. Okay. Thanks to Freeman's performance as Ricky, this movie, despite its countless flaws, is actually great. Once you skip the dumb flashback scenes, once this guy shows up, you will not be disappointed. Naughty this! This is a one-of-a-kind, unhinged performance. <laughs> oh, there you are! Freeman overacts the shit out of every line he has, he moves his eyebrows about 568 times in the movie, he goes full-on cross-eyed when he kills his girlfriend. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing, man? This guy looks like he's an alien trying to act human and failing. Now, Ricky's character is pretty interesting. In the first one, Billy was serious. He killed people because it was his mission to punish naughty people. Punish! Sure, Ricky kind of starts the same way when he punishes naughty people, like this guy who abused his lady here. But at one point, he, he just stops giving a shit. What? He kills people in a movie theater just because they're annoying. He kills his girlfriend's ex because he taunts him. He kills his girlfriend simply for being scared of this horrific event. He kills a cop for literally just doing his job. And then, oh then. He just goes on a goddamn rampage in the neighborhood, murdering anyone who dares cross his path. And you know the best part about this? He fucking loves it. It's the most hilarious thing to him. <laughs> <laughs> this guy just truly enjoys murdering the shit out of innocent people. This film about childhood trauma just turned into a schlocky 80s action movie. And I love it. Now of course, I can't go on talking about Eric Freeman without addressing his masterpiece. One of the very best and most memorable lines in cinema history. Garbage day! Huh? 
No! <laughs> Garbage Day. One of the very first internet memes. This thing is known worldwide. It's got nearly 10 million views on YouTube, and a lot of people don't even know where it's from or they haven't seen the movie. This line blew up bigger than that car. It's so iconic. It's so weird. Why does he say that? It sounds like it should be a fun one-liner, but there's no wordplay, there's no punchline, and it's not even like it was improvised or anything. This was in the script. They wrote that in. Of course, the actor is aware of this phenomenon, although he doesn't seem to give much of a shit about it. Garbage day. Yeah. Don't ask me to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I think he embraces it, but also just moved on. It was nice to, to learn about it and, and what's come of it. Good for him, but I didn't. That shit is still hilarious. GARBAGE DAY! I don't get tired of it. If there's one reason this movie is known for, it is most definitely this. It's classic, it's weird, it's funny, and it never gets old. GARBAGE DAY! You know, Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2 is, by all accounts, a pretty terrible movie. But for me, it's a Christmas classic, even though most of the film seems to take place during summer in the suburbs where people are wearing t-shirts. If you haven't already, I highly recommend watching this with a group of friends Punish. and just enjoying every bit of so bad it's good this movie has to offer. Gotcha! Just make sure you haven't watched the original in a while. There's plenty of fun to be had here, and it even has a great anti-suicide message. No! It's not worth it! Don't be a fool! Don't do it! Don't kill yourself! <laughs> yeah, just for the meme, I'll give Silent Night 2 five garbage days out of five. So watch it. You won't regret it. No. Well, that's about it for me. I want to wish you a very happy bloody Christmas full of joy and death. Until we meet again, keep watching Christmas horror movies. They're good for your health. Bye-bye.